Hello, Valentina. Welcome to the Transformational Learning Summit. Thank you for having me. Super excited to have this conversation because your work is so inspiring. And before we get into it, though, I want to ask you, what does the word transformation mean to you? For me, transformation is a process of inner transformation, first and foremost, leading to outer transformation. And what I mean by inner transformation is a set of qualities, skills, capacities that we develop within ourselves to become our whole potential and prefigurative cell, first and foremost, in the bodily system that we're in, living with, first and foremost, before seeking to create those systems of wholeness and thrivability elsewhere. So that cycle of inner transformation leading to outer transformation is how I seek to transform on a daily and moment to moment basis. Mm. And, and so much of what I perceive about your work is, is about transforming education. And can you tell me a little bit about what what that looks like and how that journey's emerged for you? Sure. So that journey began long ago when I was a young person, younger person myself in my early high school days. I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama as the daughter of a Indian father and Italian mother, first generation American. And at that intersection of identities, there were lots of questions coming up for me at that time. And I felt really called to also work with other young people in this school close to home community that was very different than mine, had far less resources, and their school very much reflected of that. And I realized in that moment how much of what we are able to access in life, our abilities to thrive, our support system around us, the ecosystem and nature that's around us, so much is rooted in our educational experiences and what we learn and what we don't learn and what we have to unlearn. And so that wake up call at that moment stayed with me through my continued education and was my learning question around how do we transform our education systems so that we can heal and create more thriving world for all people and planet. And that led me to start a, a magazine that uplifted youth stories and youth led ways of change making when I was a youth in university. And that led me to Ashoka working on uh, at this global network of social entrepreneurs and innovators on its empathy initiative, bringing social emotional learning to schools and and uh, education systems and more holistic ways of developing the whole young person. And through those conversations now at global levels, I often found myself not only one of the youngest people in the room or the youngest person in the room, I also found that that global often was only people from the US and Europe. It did mm. not include folks from from truly the global majority and global south and so myself and the second youngest person in that room Zinem Huyi, who has now become my co-founder for youth by youth really connected on this idea of what if we created a global learning community that really brought these worlds all of our world together around this question of how might we work with and for young people to redesign the future of education. And that's what birthed Youth by Youth during our uh, global pandemic that opened a window of opportunity and awareness in the crisis of our education systems today. And that, mm. um, that now has been growing for the last three years. 
So amazing. So I, the question that I want to get to, but I'm not going to give this question to you now, just planting it is, you know, what, what does transforming <clears throat> education actually look like? Like, where are you seeing it's, it's, it as it's like shaping to be, but I, I guess part of how you're getting there is what you call the global learning community. And, and I'd love to like expand on that a little bit. What, what is a global learning community? What does that look like in practice? Sure. So one of the challenges that we're seeing in education and also in the social sector and transformation more broadly is that we have a lot of innovations of how to do and be differently in this world, how to create more systems of thrivability for, for people and planet. We have a lot of these innovations, but they're happening at the margins mostly and also often put in positions that they're having to compete with other innovators, the same pots of resources and funding. And this is no less true for education in the way that transformation is happening. And so a global learning community is seeking to address that lead, that, that issue, which is creating communities of practice that first and foremost serve those who are making the transformations on the ground to access global shared knowledge, work more effectively together in collaboration with local innovators, young people, entrepreneurs, the entire ecosystem, as well as the global ecosystem of actors and influencers that they need to make those transformations come to life. And so a global learning community is how it looks like within Youth by Youth is one that brings people together to share that knowledge, to share, to build relationships across differences, across geographies, across generations, to actualize the local in-person work more effectively and more over time, more easily than right now, which is a system of really strong barriers to entry for certain people from certain places and certain positionalities. And so the global learning community is trying to create democratize that access to knowledge and resources and and a sense of belonging to the larger conversation and narratives that we need to shift in order to make those transformations happen. Mm. Can you share a little bit about um, how you how you grew that network? So you know you you mentioned you started with one other co-founder, and so how did you go from two to this to a global network? And then what is what does interaction in that network look like? Is it like regular Zoom calls? Is it a community space? Is it you guys are all on a Slack channel? Like what is it? You know what is the actual like real world expression of of that community? Sure. So. Zineb and I actually are also co-founders of this other community of practice called the Weaving Lab. It's a community of social innovators and researchers and others that are seeking to connect people, places, and projects into more thriving learning ecosystems. And uh, that was the beginning of how we started to connect and collaborate with a community of other peers in not just the education transformation space, but also beyond all the all the dimensions that it will take to create a world where where everyone and, every, and all planet can thrive. And that weaving lab became our professional home, if you will, for ourselves that we we co design with others. And in that process of our first learning journey that we were digging into this identity of what does it really mean to be a weaver in this space, a connector of people, places, projects. And for us, the question was, what does it mean to be a weaver in the education world? And so that was how Zineb and I first started to co-create around this idea of a youth-led and a youth-centered learning community that fosters intergenerational collaboration. What that looks like is that we have virtual offerings like our annual learning festival that's happening this upcoming weekend that is now our first fourth iteration of this festival that we have via the beautiful platform of zoom 
that we are on now, gathering you know, nearly 600 young people and adult allies who are dedicated to transforming education, to have conversations of what do we need to know to create the world of our deepest longings? How do we need to live? How do we need to weave together and have our also showcases of youth-led projects that have been seeded throughout the year through our virtual programs. And those all exist in the live format on Zoom and then also in our in-person global hubs, as we call them, our globally supported but locally driven youth-led hubs that are currently in nine different locations across six countries in Africa as where that's where the majority of our community and our executive director, director Arielua Adienka is based in Lagos, Nigeria. So that's kind of been our flagship home. So we are hybridizing more and more with every year. And that is very intentional so that we create these communities of belonging, not just virtually, yet and also in person of, of action towards shifting local, national, and, and global policy and education, and which I think is part of that question later that we'll get to. The other bits of it are WhatsApp. So that's been our mobilizing day-to-day -day way of staying connected. We have a newsletter and blog and Youth's Voice magazine, which uplifts the creative works of our young people on an ongoing basis and their stories. Social media has been a huge tool, especially that we work with young people, Instagram um, and posting videos, creating content around there. And then the upcoming emerging platform that we have to, to co-learn co that we're co-creating with our partners is called our Knowledge Garden. So that is the next frontier of the way in which we're bringing together, we're, that we're creating an intergenerational home for learning and collaboration, not just with within Youth by Youth, but with our ecosystem of nearly 60 plus partners that we've been building over the years that have other communities of young people and adult allies and sources of knowledge and, and amazing curricula uh, that is redefining the way that we learn and, and do education. And so bringing that all into one shared home for learning is our goal and uh, having a garden of knowledge that we can all access and especially the places with the least resources and uh, lowest bandwidth internet wise can still access and use that to create transformations where they are. So mm -hmm. that's the emerging frontier that we are currently developing. Is the, is the garden like a, a new platform you're building? Or is it like a kind of a wiki knowledge base kind of thing, but like your version of it? It'll be a new platform, a new application. And so mm. we're hoping it to be a mobile first, given that that's the most accessible way of accessing knowledge mm. uh, for most of our community and the, the majority of the world these days. And so that's where we're we're currently in a actually in the upcoming festival we'll have a co creation session to decide, design and define what do we really see in this first iteration of the garden and also. Using this learning festival to harvest all the knowledge that has been accumulated over the years and through all our all their experiences, but um, we are yet to start developing and looking definitely for more allies and supporters to help us get started on that. So mm, that's, cool. yeah. And, and for like, as far as how your organization grows, like the like student youth participants, uh, is that all word of mouth or, you know, it's also, you, you said you have a pretty big footprint in, in Africa. Like how does, how, how does the, the actual member base expand? Yes. Good question. So, um, so we, are we grew through also the networks that myself and my co-founder Zineb had through me formerly working at Ashoka, mm -hmm. herself at WISE World Innovation Summit on Education, we and then also a third collaborator at the time that would have been at 100, which is a Finnish organization looking at inno innovations in education. And so what we did in 2020 is combine all the organizations of youth led youth serving organizations that we had ever met or had been curious about meeting 
and spent our early pandemic having hundreds of conversations. And from there, the first ask was, will you offer a session to young people, youth education activists at our learning festival? And that was really the initial seed and invitation that brought our community together. And at the same time, the other invitation was, do you know youth facilitators, hosts, community organizers would be interested in co-designing and holding space with us? Because we wanted Youth by Youth first and foremost to be for youth by youth, youth led and hosted. And so that's been always the core of our programming is really building the capacity of young people to hold these spaces for intergenerational dialogue and intercultural collaboration. And so that led us to our initial team of 20 or so uh, youth hosts that um, some of which have now become our core team members and our executive director and program director and those mm. uh, and built every other program that has come our creative director um, everything that comes that has been born from youth by youth has been born from the young people who have showed up and stayed the course with resilience and uh, so much creativity and that we really were intentional you know because of our also our personal identities with Zineb being Moroccan and and having deep roots on the continent of Africa and myself with roots in India on my father's side is we always had this original seed of first and foremost we want to to root and anchor youth by youth in the global south where these communities of support and solidarity with the uh, powerful influencers and allies of Europe and US don't exist and those bridges don't exist in a way that's really youth led and youth youth driven at the moment and so that's where we just were really intentional always about the geographic balance um, tipping towards the global south from the onset and so that's how we really grew with our first youth hosts and cohort with deeper roots in Africa, first and foremost. And, uh, and then with every cycle, uh, we, we have our, every year we have a, a weavership fellowship. So those are, that's our 11 month fellowship for youth weavers or community organizers that are seeking to build their skills in this practice of weaving, interconnecting mm. people, places, projects into more thriving ecosystems. And so that every cycle, every program sort of expands our tentacles and invitations to, to folks around the world and that initial community of partners that we engage to say, hey, do you know someone who'd be a good fit for this? And then we have these these continuous programs then our global action circles which is our five-month accelerator of youth-led projects that then is another invitation and then our festival and so through these mm. this cycle of invitations and continuously nurturing this wider ecosystem of partners and allies with a real strong intentional focus of always being 80 percent majority youth and majority based in the global south, that's kind of how we've grown with mm. um, with now more organically is growing. So impressive, so inspiring, like really. And and I, I'm you, you mentioned, I think you mentioned having almost like 60 allies or partners or something like that. I, I, can you expand a little more on how you think about partnership and allyship in, in the context of, of the work you're doing? Sure. So uh, we originally received the invitation to even host our learning festival from Learning Planet Institute, who has been a close ally and partner since the beginning of, of our story. And they have a wider Learning Planet Festival that's happening all during this week. And so Youth by Youth is always the culminating youth led and intergenerational event that that brings all of that learning into a three day rapid reflection and learning cycle and and that so some of our partners have 
been uh, very active in being conveners with us and that including big change uh, Salzburg global seminar um, the uh, those partners in are really committed to intergenerational collaboration and see that as core of their education strategy so that's I would say the deepest level is that we're co-creating we create programs and convenings and and guides and resources for others to really do this work in their organizations and spaces and locations. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a set of partners that are our amplifiers to the work that our young people are doing. They help us find other young people and they also are uplifters of their stories when mm -hmm. they come out of our program. So that really is a that co elevation is something that that, you know, not everyone can really be deep in the trenches of co-creation, but co-elevation is something that we see is also incredibly needed, especially to uplift youth voices and the voices that are less heard in the education space. And then we have a variety of ways in which people contribute and, and uh, create offerings for our young people who emerge from our programs. We place our a big outcome of what we we aspire to have in place for every young person coming to our program is more thrivable employment opportunities in the education sector. And so we intentionally match those who graduate from our weavership with uh, with opportunities in that network of partners and allies that they can then uh, bring more global perspectives, more diverse perspectives and youth centered perspectives to education organizations that are seeking to move in that direction. And so that looks like consultancies, that looks like like in a lot of young people being hired uh, for for various positions out of once they leave, uh, not, not once they leave Youth by Youth, because Youth by Youth is a, a forever home for but once they they graduate from uh, their programming and so we want to that's also a very important and some and critical piece of making this this work for more and more young people is that activism cannot be a side thing but how can it be the path of thriving uh, for especially in the education space for any for any young person who's who's seeking to to pursue that that journey um and that's that's really hard uh, that's really hard in some places more than others mm. um, and so that's so partnership really depends on the person um it's just like any relationship some friends you call every day and some friends you have that once a year really meaningful conversation and it really lights you up <laughs> and you know you know you're in each other's lives and you mm. tap when you know you know their strengths and you you tap each other when needed and that's kind of how youth by youth looks at partnership mm. on the other side we have something that that's not not for organizations but for individuals is a commitment and that's called our allyship program and that is our invitation to anyone who considers themselves an adult uh, and so and maybe also just an ally of young people so that's also older youth or youth that have been in the space of youth empowerment for a really long time to be able to come and support and share their wisdom and experiences with our young people that are in our programming and offer uh, guidance around storytelling or community organizing or fundraising or any of these other more operational capacities that many of us have had to learn as we do and how to accelerate that through these allyships which we don't call mentorships because uh in our philosophy learning happens in both directions and mm. especially in the education space there needs to be that bi-directional learning between young people and adult allies at all times in order to effectively create experiences that allow every young person to thrive so these allyships in our allyship program helps to practice that 
for any adult and young person who wants to practice that more effectively and get some support in that learning journey. Mm, so amazing. Um, in in terms of like growing the allyship or the 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 partnerships, is that something that you like actively research and and pursue? Or is it something that you kind of let come to you? Like, are you trying to recruit more allies, more partners, and spending time like? you know finding like explicitly going out after them what's the process for that it's been a bit of both i think it go, it's, it's we've gone through seasons mm. i the, the the early season was actively us reaching out and then there was a season of really managing the flow in and i think that 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 is awesome and yeah. also takes a lot of intentional relationship building and deepening of really everyone finding their best way to be of service to this 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 movement of movements towards transforming education and so that's been the season that we've been in is really bringing our partners and allies more into specific and tangible ways that that we can create change together. And that's, and I think we're now, we're now at that place that we're now seeking a new set of partners and allies to effectively resource and sustain those co-creations and what has materialized from those relationships. So now I think there's a period of expansion happening again of having to seek intentionally, you know, uh, funders in particular locations of our our hubs that we have emerged you know across Africa that are now at a stage of ripeness who is interested in supporting this kind of work mm. you know that's so it's we have the or our youth projects that you know now there's been nearly over 200 young people who have gone through our programs and developing projects in their their schools and communities that are transforming education and learning that around climate action through education youth mental health supporting youth educators you know all the different facets peace education who is interested in in resourcing that work and so we're kind of in a in a very intentional time of calling in those who are in a wider ring of of support and influence of youth and uh, that maybe are not going to be deep in the the trenches of co-creation as i mentioned before or co-elevation but now it's really can is there a way that you can help to to catalyze this either through through funds or other relationships and doors that you can open um so it's much more i guess acupuncture work at this moment mm. um of seeing where we can uh attract attention and and release the the tension this metaphor maybe is not working as well as i <laughs> planned I, I like it but it's very it's very like it's it's also i feel like it's this like the expression of weaving in a way you're kind mm. of very intentionally creating a web of of all these relationships and and expanding it and calling in more more like threads and strands um exactly so I, yeah thank you for getting I, I i love going deep into like the nitty-gritty details of how how stuff works and and also just how like an awesome uh, project like yours actually becomes what what it is um so i wanted to ask you a couple of questions um and and maybe i'll do them one at a time one is how you said you've been running your weaver fellowship like how many times now or how many years we've done two cohorts of our weavership uh, mm -hmm. and three cohorts of our global action circles, which is our five month project accelerator for youth activists and adult allies who are coming around common themes around education. So mm -hmm. that's what have you learned from from running the two cohorts in terms of like how you actually deliver the understanding and create an experience for your participants? First and foremost, it's all about relationships and going deep with those relationships and with each other in relationship to each other. I 
believe that we, in our second iteration of our weavership, we grew and nearly doubled in size. And it was a great experience in terms of seeing what our team was capable of holding and at the same time affirmed that small is all that the 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 pressure to to grow and scale is not is not going to get us there any faster than the speed that relationships form and so that that need to really just that investment in relationships takes time and there is there's no there's no shortcuts in that and and that also includes the um yeah the relationships to to ourselves and this organization and how how we're sense making with each new cycle um all everything takes takes really intentional processes of reflection and creating space for that um, is is a real you know sometimes can be in juxtaposition to this pressure to to, to scale and, and mm. do bigger and more so yeah moving at the speed of relationships moving at the speed of trust um, that's been one on our curriculum it really I think this year affirmed how unique we, 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 we just really felt it amongst our young people and uh, and more and more, you know, as the different networks that that our young people are a part of, which are a lot of converging and over and threading through a lot of our partner networks. Our unique offering to this world is this this idea of weaving and the weavership as a as a way of building that capacity those capacities of weaving in young people. And that is something that, that we, we weren't as centered on in maybe years one and two, we said, oh, we were also doing our global action circles. We have our global hubs and all this. But I think this year really affirmed that this is our core mm. and, and we're going to really dedicate ourselves to this core. And from there and that backbone, of youth weavers, everything else really emerges. And so I think that that really is in some ways, you know, has has created an opening for also us really bringing in our partners and our allies to intentionally focus on how can you resource this weavership, providing residencies that are active practices of weaving in your organizations that you want a young person who can help you with bringing together a community of practice of your stakeholders, we can offer that to you. And, and uh, so like things like this, that we're, we're starting to think more creatively. And I think the, the last piece of it is how much we desire and long to be in person together. And the, the virtual has been an incredible opening of, of opportunity and access to perspectives and people that we otherwise wouldn't have even thought thought to or even dreamed of being able to collaborate with before the pandemic and people have opened doors based on trust in ways that that wasn't wasn't available before you had to be show up at some global convening at you know UN general assembly cop 28 some sort of insert big convening here, which is only accessible to some people to be recognized and trusted enough to have a door open for you. And I think that that is starting to melt away a little bit more as people are becoming more and more aware and more and more interacting with wider circles of of people. And um, and I think while that is such a beautiful potential of the virtual space, it, there is a limitation to how we can hold each other and really be be and see one another and 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 what how we can learn how to hold space in person um, in the virtual space and so that's the frontier that we're 
That's why the global hubs um, mm. have emerged as our key priority for the coming year and why we're really dreaming up to have an in-person module for our leadership in the coming year. Um, if not this year, then the next. So, but it takes a lot and uh, visas are no joke. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, we, we learned that through our first in-person core team meetup this past year, how it takes a lot of loving labor mm. to bring people together. And so, and also there is a, cost, emissions, airplanes. So we don't want to do that without purpose, but there are punctuated moments of time that that can really bring people together in a way that they, that then sustains them and nourishes them for perhaps another three years to really keep going. And so I think mm. we're, 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 we're reaching that point and I'm trying to manifest it for our community and um, it will happen. And in, in terms of the weavership structure, is it, do you meet like every week, once a month, twice a month? Yes. Yeah, so once a month, there's a whole cohort meetup uh, session that we present our curriculum. So our curriculum is, is um, first in this past year, we did six months of learning and five months of practice in that sequential way in which there was a more uh, theoretical portion and then a more practical applicable application portion where they're placed in either our global action circles to host one of those or our global hubs. We're now interlacing them a little bit more. So that's, I guess, another lesson learned. Uh, cannot separate theoretical with the practical. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, but our theory is separated into what is weaving, weaving relationships, weaving communities, weaving uh, ecosystems, weaving movements. Um, those are the, the, and actually I forgot the first one, which is weaving the self. Mm. And so that's, that is the foundation. It's first looking to uh, reconnect with the earlier conversation of what is transformation really beginning there and developing a ritual and practice that sustains the the well-being and nourishes the the more integration internally of each of our youth weavers throughout the the eleven month journey. So that's the curriculum uh, that I really have to say that Zineb is my co-founder has been the lead visionary and weaver of that our our curriculum designer extraordinaire, and then the other piece of it is the practice where they are placed in specific hosting roles and opportunities within the youth by youth world. Uh, and this year in different residencies at partner organizations. So depending on whether they're trying to weave locally, young people and adult allies to create transformation of education, say uh, to transform uh, the youth unemployment in their community or whatever is their specific issue or challenge that they are called to, to serve and weave within um, and or doing that work at a global level with one of our partner organizations. So we're, we're starting to, um, so that balance of the residency with also the, the cohort model of building community and providing some theoretical understanding and um, and resources and and reflections mm. uh, is the the way that we've organized the, the learning journey. Are there any like specific practices that you use to help them cultivate more self awareness or to help them feel more connected to each other? Mm. Yeah, there's been. I think one key practice that we learned from one of our partners, Narrative 4, which is the power of storytelling, and that, and really storytelling in which you tell someone else's story as if they were their own and practicing active listening and retelling it back, that process of storytelling, especially early on in a community that is as diverse as ours and have such different experiences and upbringings really opens and unlocks um, 
relational trust. And so that's been a, that's been a one practice of really, really understanding your own story, your own narratives and limiting beliefs and, and also having that mirrored and reflected back to you um, and having the windows of other mm. experiences. So that's, that's been um, one practice. We do a lot of, um, you know, we, we talk about prefiguration, a lot of just the imagining being the, the, the communities we wish to see in, in the world right now, and the ways in which we create a culture of love and of, of solidarity and, and um, really learning from failure and all the different kind of ways in which we're trying to shift to more life affirming um, practices in our education system and beyond. And so that looks like a lot of, we always start our, our calls with um, at least taking time for, for breathing together, uh, meditation or a visualization. Um, we offer, we have a, uh, several different pre recorded visualizations at different junctures in the journey to then imagine their, their own selves future and also looking back. Um, we, we do a lot of kind of creative play through drawing and games and other kind of uh, more um, that, yeah, more youthful ways of, of, of interacting that, uh, that through song, you know, then through, through um, other artistic endeavors, kind of sharing those works and creating space for that in our, in our calls and in our community. So that has been uh, a way of connecting with the self, poetry, often bringing in a lot of poetry into our calls. And uh, yeah, so various elements, nature, nature, mm -hmm. time, nature, connection, nature, meditations. Um, I think that that's been that healing that relationship with nature or reconnecting if we have been um, distanced from that. Um, as many of us are and living who are living also urban environments, that's been a key piece of our um, practice, especially in learning how to weave ecosystems. We need to understand how nature has been our greatest teacher in that. And so we, we often uh, look at examples from nature to connect with the ways in which we are looking at our own internal balance and and change within ourselves as well as in our in the work that we're doing. And so it's a mm. variety of practices from a lot of different traditions. Uh, and we also invite people in our community to offer different practices that they they use to center and ground themselves or envision and reflect. Um, so always we every year our our canon grows of of ways of of um, ways of weaving the self. Hmm. And then a lot of those uh, alumni go on to support your global action groups and the and the local hubs. Is that how it works? Yes. So they then become uh, the hosts of our global action circles. So we this year had eight different themes. Uh, that we always define and refine at our annual learning festival of what those themes will be for the upcoming year. And uh, the, but now have been pretty consistently youth mental health, peace education, supporting youth educators, climate action through education, relational and inclusive education, and several more that I will come back to. <laughs> I was going to think you get all of them. <laughs> and this, <laughs> and and those circles are cohorts of uh, about 10 to 14 young people and adult allies that go on a journey together for five months to uh, through our pedagogy, which is always in the, the three phase cycle of what is, what if, what now. 
what what is our experience of education? What are the challenges that we're experiencing? What is my story? What is your story? Um, what what it, you know? It's a, a process of meaning making and sense making um, on those on on our personal and collective level, and then taking that to what if? How do we radically reimagine solutions and initiatives and 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 experiments in this around our learning questions? Um, and then what now? How do we take collective action? And so our global action circles goes through that um, that cycle at a global cohort level around these different themes. And then our local hubs do that at a local level um, around a specific issue that's very pertinent to their local community. So in Cameroon, for instance, their focus has been really around peace building through education, given the ongoing civil war between Anglophone and Francophone sides of, of the um, community there. And so that's been really their focus in our hub in Lagos, Nigeria, youth unemployment's their focus. Um, so depending on the context um, that's that they go through that kind of local action circle cycle um, or global, because it always intersects with the global as well. Mm. And our youth weavers choose which practice either both or one that they are really feeling called to to serve and hold for that five month period, uh, which will continue. And we're looking to also expand that to practices and offerings in other organizations um, in the coming years as residencies to kind of expand again the ways in which our allies and partners can contribute to this cohort. Mm. So you 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 have all these conversations, all this knowledge. Do you? currently have a system for somehow like harvesting it i know you mentioned the, the knowledge gardens um or the 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 app, the app that you want to build but in in the meantime how do you kind of sense make across the system yeah yes so the knowledge gardens definitely aspiring to serve that need in a more fluid way um, and right now we have a library of resources that is uh that we've been continuously uh, curating our, we have a, on our team, a knowledge curator, uh, Mohini Gavender, who's based in South Africa, who has been doing an amazing job and also created our blog on our Youth by Youth website. And so that's been a way of sharing back what we've been learning in a more storytelling format um, with, youth, with, with our community. So that's that weekly, um, something else is published and also is an open invitation for people to, to share their learnings through that platform. Uh, we have a YouTube channel and our social media is kind of seen as also an extension of a learning platform where we share back things that are emerging from our community with a wider audience mm. to, to learn about education transformation and, and youth activism and the tools to, to do so. And um, those, are, those are our and then I would say our very vast Google Drive that is a shared folder of many folders and subfolders that uh, that are we've been kind of collecting these resources um, from our from our allies and from our young people as they are uh, learning and harvesting the 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 conversations from these global action circles and global hubs. So right now, I wouldn't say it is, it is for the very zealous learner to, to digest. Mm. And, and we're hoping that we can make a format through the knowledge garden that allows for more easily accessible and maybe light bites of that knowledge to be accessed um, uh, from, with a, with a wider community and and a community of communities for, with, through our partners. Mm. So, um, but that's kind of how it's been living at the moment. I think we're ready to circle back to my second question now. <laughs> After that very long, long road around everything else. But so, so given, and I, and I love the picture you've just painted because it's just, it's so profoundly awesome. Like I'm just so, so deeply impressed and inspired. And, and so, you have this incredible 
ecosystem of people around the world having all of these conversations and weaving and how like I guess there's one sense just your personal sense of the directionality of that because I guess it's all kind of in formation um but but then like yeah where's it all going and how does it come back to actually somehow like reshape the underlying education system like the actual system of like university education or or is that not the intention that is the intention and there's a short game medium game and long game that is a part of that answer in the short run is that we are seeding lots of youth led and intergenerational experiments that are transforming schools and communities where our young people are right now, including, for example, one of our youth weavers and who also has created our global hub in Nakivale refugee camp, uh, Rufin Kungwa, he started a association of head teachers in his community and in the, the refugee camp that is supporting to uh, bringing conflict resolution and peace building skills to schools and communities there through professional development for those head teachers and he used his weaving skills to to connect those those individuals together and create learning uh, around his local community on particularly a topic that touches every young person who lives where he lives and so that that is an experiment that is growing those other experiments in the schools around him to make those changes at a grassroots level. So I feel this is this is stage one that we are in with Youth by Youth, with our global action circles and global hubs of mobilizing and seeding all of these experiments around gender and education. That was one that I missed out on before. And 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 all these other threads and topics that we constantly hear are the inadequacies of our education system. So that that's phase one. Those phase two is the harvesting and sharing of that learning across the geographies, generations, and uh, current boundaries to where that knowledge is is and the knowledge garden is is serving that the communities and coalitions that we've been participating in are also serving that to to bring that knowledge to other funders so that they can shift their priorities of where they're putting their their investment to not just safe buys that have been really just keeping the status quo going on but actually into these experimental investments that are creating more thrivable futures for all young people and planet. And so with these experiments as the, and these stories as a, as a way of inviting those other powers that be to be a part of that, the, the growth and deeper investigation and research and resourcing of those youth led and youth driven experiments, then we can start to say, okay, how do we bring that innovation to a entire city to an entire country and so this is something that we're doing in already in lagos nigeria and, and uh, with through their professional development their their training for youth educators which right now the the teachers that um that enter the the profession in nigeria they have a two-week Three week boot camp and then are entering the classroom with uh, no other support and so our young people have created a series of workshops at that government provided camp that is bringing these other alternative ways of of. Uh, of education and building relationships in classrooms and creating this more holistic development of young people in the classroom, giving that training that now not accessible and then creating ongoing communities of support through WhatsApp and our other channels. And so that's starting to happen at a more uh, regional level over there. And so we're starting to see that. So that's phase two. And then phase three is seeing how all these young people 
they keep living their life. They keep growing up and having their experiences and they become the heads of, of their local departments of education or maybe even their national uh, departments of education. They become the, the funder that is able to then resource the next generation of experiments. They become the storyteller and journalist that is able to uplift the voices of, of the next generation and the current models that right now are not getting the, the same light as the, the, more, uh, the more quick fixes that, that most of our funding is going to. And so we are starting to look at, uh, so that's the longer term generational change that we're going after is that we're creating an entire where the uh, future uh, in uh, future set of influencers, educators, policymakers, journalists, creatives that are able to shift narratives and shift policy together through that global knowledge garden and ecosystem of support that they've been already interacting with over the last 20, 30 years, and also the the they've already done all those experiments on the ground through their own lived experiences as well and have seen what is working what isn't and have now have that intelligence that global intelligence and solidarity to sh make the local local and national shifts that are needed and call on a global set of allies to apply the pressure to make these campaigns these national campaigns for change happen and that's kind of what we see in activism and around the world and any great movement that happens even at a national level, whether it is the anti-apartheid in South Africa, that 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 moment happened because also globally awareness and pressure was put upon by the the government in that current state, in that current regime. And, and so we see that there is a necessity for not just local grassroots mobilization, but global solidarity to create transformations at a national level. And so doing that local weaving over time is how we hope to make um, these wider scale transformations happen. And uh, we're planting the seeds now for hopefully that they, they grow in in a generation or maybe two generations of time. Mm. I love the the long-term vision and the just the the approach to thinking about it like multi-generationally. Like you're already you've got this intergenerational infrastructure today. And then you're also thinking about the influence and the impact of the the younger generation that you're working with right now. So my recommendation is that we book a time slot to do this interview again in 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, <let's see. laughs> I, I'm like <laughs> I'm gonna pencil this into my head that I'm gonna that I'm, gonna, that I'm gonna redo this interview in 30 years and see where we're at. But hopefully, um, wow. hopefully it all pans out into a, a an incredible, incredible future. Yeah, we um, we will get there. We will. Get I know, there. I know, I know. We will with people like you working on this kind of thing. So, um, Valentina, and thank yourself. you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and just you like going into such depth and detail about the incredible work that you're doing. Um, I'm I'm personally deeply touched and and like you said earlier about like allies and and not mentorship. Like I just feel like I've just downloaded and learned so much from you today. So thank you so much. Likewise, thank you so much, Lance, for this opportunity to share. <laughs>